July 25, 2023. This is the S&P 500 eFutures Mini on the Ninja Creator 8 platform. Just look down at the descriptions below. You can see where I thought I saw setups as well as where I took my trades. On the chart, I took my trades on these boxed setups right here. And then if I saw a setup, or I think I saw a setup, whether it was a high probability or not, just something I want to mention, it's these non-boxed indicators. So overall, the market today in the pre-market, it looked like into the open, it was going to be in this trading range from the pre-market highs and the pre-market lows. And then probably about an hour after regular trading hours open, maybe about um, actually two hours, it started a very slow, gradual grind. But even in the market open, you can tell the grind, slow rally was already happening. I thought that's all one, two, three, four legs up. In between each four legs was these three consolidations, then it kind of sold off. There was only one real piece of economic data that came out that might have moved the markets. It came out at around seven o'clock Pacific Standard, which was the consumer confidence. And uh, I guess it didn't really move the market all that much when it came out at seven o'clock Pacific Standard, which kind of still had it chopping around. So I'm going to go through my trades right now. So this is a pre-market. In the pre-market, it bounced up, came up. So you don't really know you have a trading range yet, but you do see two legs up and pulls back and there's actually two legs back down. So here you only have maybe two, three confirmations and you don't really have a confirmation at the top. So you don't really know if you have a trading range so far. You just know you have a potential support down here, but you don't know if you have a resistance up here. The first actual setup that I saw was right around here. The new low here, it's the first entry short, pulls back, climbs all the way up. The second entry short, I thought this was actually a pretty, pretty good setup because prices are coming off the bottom of the range, which had shown support from the pre-market. Now, you know, it doesn't, didn't land exactly to the tick, but it does have a pretty good little range, little region of support right here. And it had a strong push up over the EMA right here. Came down, and this is where a second entry short was made, and it is the failure of the second entry short. Now, it made a double top, right? But when I saw this happen, I wasn't sure. I hesitated. The EMA is holding, and there's enough room to the top for scalp. And you don't know that you have a failure until you get to this candle. And this candle closed pretty, well, pretty bullish. So I would have dropped my entry probably one tick above these two double tops right here it's hard to know if i really would have gotten filled on this candle or not but i thought this was a pretty decent setup so if you did get filled you would have gotten your scalp out here and if you kept your stop loss down here you would have been safe all the way up then prices continue moving i saw these two legs one leg down excuse me one leg up pull back second leg up didn't quite make a measured move i also saw potentially this ascending channel coming up it wasn't very, uh, it didn't have too many confirmations to make me feel confident in it, but it did bounce off the top and was rejected by this resistance up here, which was formed from the pre-market high. Technically, the pre-market high is up here, but I took it down here just because this is where most of the body of the candle was. was. Then you do have a new high here, first entry long, second entry long here, technically you have a third entry, where you count it as one leg down, push up, and the second leg down. It's it does have two legs down and then it's probably going to come back up to test it. the limits or the extreme of this previous channel. However, I just didn't like the setup. It just didn't look uh, clean enough for me. So I left it alone. Prices continue moving. I do see this new low here. You have a first entry short right here. Breaks down below. Bounces up. This is where your second entry short is formed. Now, when I notice this, this candle is very doji. Well, not very. It is a doji. It is bouncing off the top of this top of this range. So you could, if you're aggressive, decide to take this short. But I thought the cleanup, excuse me, I thought the setup wasn't very clean. It is kind of a triple test off this top here. It would be the third test of it. And it looks like it's getting rejected. But it's a little bit giving me um, a little caution just because I do notice the EMA, which is this blue line, is starting to trend up. And for a few few tests in the past, it was holding support. It broke down below, came up. It broke down a second time, and it came up. But this one was actually creating a higher low. So to trust that this second entry short 
when this confirms a second entry short, I should take a short. It gives me a lot of caution, makes me worried because this EMA is coming potentially into play. So I just wanted to wait for a lower high confirmation. Fortunately, you don't get a lower high confirmation. But you do get this setup, which is my very first trade. Now, I pretty much believe that there was a trading range right here, touched once, twice, three times. And on the bottom, it looks like there's some kind of support here being respected. I count this as one, two, a triple test. And I count this as a failed breakout triple test. I like that this candle became very, very bullish. There's a strong push back into this trading range here as a potential confirmation of this larger. Well, it, it broke out of this descending channel coming down. And I thought it was a failed breakout of this blue range. So I thought, okay, it might actually bounce back up. So I actually entered one tick above. It's a little aggressive because you technically don't have a second entry. You do only have a first entry, but I was basing the strength of this trade off of this fail breakout and this triple test. And I saw this as when this descending channel came down, it broke out this side. It might push back up and then have a second leg down. So it certainly, I think in hindsight, I will admit that this was a little bit of an aggressive setup to wait for a second entry long. I'm waiting here for get scalped out, and you actually get your second entry long here. Now, the second entry long, when this formed and it was creating these candles, I actually drew this one touch, two touch, and three. And then I wasn't really sure where the top of this trading range, this trading uh, channel was, because I had it here at one time thinking this is an overshoot. And then later I did drag it all the way up to here. What really mattered was, what really mattered to me was that this was a support. So when it touched the second time, this is actually a second entry long. I think this is the better entry to have taken because this is confirming the fail breakout triple test. And it's kind of touching. I mean, it's close, but you can consider it a touch of this ascending support. So this is actually a better entry to have taken. And it would have gotten me probably one or two ticks lower. Nevertheless, I did just kind of take this trade already. And if I didn't take it, I think this would have been the trade I would have taken. Of course, I didn't. I get my scalp right here, as you can see. This is where the uh, exit was. So then, uh, press then continue moving. Drops around. I thought I saw this shortened trend channel going up. Breaks out. It comes back down. It touches this bottom of this support again, which I like. Coming back up, I do see a failed second entry short setting up. There's a new low here. First entry short goes up. It's confirmed second entry short. Now, technically, you don't have a failure yet. And I didn't mark it as a failed second entry short, but I was looking for it because I do want to take longs as opposed to shorts. But what's happening here is when it closed here, and this one confirms your failed second entry short. Now, this is already kind of looking like it's testing a potential midline of this blue trading range. And it kind of feels like it's, it might be in the middle of nowhere. So when I saw this is a confirmed failed second entry short, I would have wanted to take a trade, but I didn't by one tick above the previous signal, which had been right here. And as you can see, it never would have come back to fill me, but I never even initiated the trade anyways. But if I did, it would have been right here. And the trade had gone on without me. And then if prices continue moving up, it kind of hits the top here. And that's where I decided, because I remember, I wasn't really sure where the top of this channel was. I had it at this point, And then when it, hit, I thought, well, maybe it actually might be right here because it looks like it touches pretty nicely here and it touches pretty nicely here. So I see a potentially big channel occurring right now. So then I do see a new high, first entry long. This formed, broke above, and it created my second entry long. So I actually took this candle after it flashed up and confirmed the second entry long. I dropped my order one not really one tick, but at the high of the previous signal bar. I'm going to admit this signal bar isn't a very good, very good confident signal bar because it's closed very bearish. So I'm basing the entry on the strength of this EMA and the trend is going up. And I saw this break of this potential channel. It's kind of a two tier channel because it looked like it was one channel here and then the midline. And I had that at one time, but I did not really like this excessive overshoot and float outside so i actually dragged it up and i saw it as potentially a two-tier channel and it came back down i'm thinking it's going to come back up and test this so i actually entered right here 
flashes up and I was able to scalp out. And I did that on purpose just because I didn't want to push it to the top here at the risk of having a rejection. And it looks like if I did try to push it to the top here, I would have survived so far. Comes down and my stop would have been down here. I had to sweat through all this and I still would have been out of the trade. I'm just happy that this one scalp worked. And in the meantime, I did see this new high here. It's a first entry long, pulls back. Here's the second entry long, but it also creates a failed second entry short because it's technically a new low here. Technically, if you were strict, this is the, a new low is actually made right here. It'd be new low, first entry short, second entry short. You can reset the count here. And this is considered another new low, first entry short, second entry short. And this candle, as soon as it flashed up, it fails. But so fails a second entry short and it creates a second entry long. Now, this setup in any other instance would have been worth it. But if you look at this close of this candle, which you would have had to wait for, you don't have much room to scalp out before you hit the top. So it'd be a very, very dicey trade. You'd be buying right into the highs. Turns out in this instance, it would have worked out, but you don't know that at the time. It could have just easily bounce back down. And then also, as soon as it broke above here, if you were wait, going for more than just one point all the way back here, you'd have to sweat through this entire trading. It's almost an hour of waiting before it flashes up and fills you. And I definitely would not have wanted to do that. I think if, it, if I was going for more than this one point scalp, and it started oscillating and I was looking and watching this, I might've considered just breaking, just getting outbreak even. But fortunately, I would got my one point scalp that I was looking for right here. Prices continue moving up, uh, breaks back down, goes into this another trading range here, breaks out again. Here, as you can see, this channel going up is starting to fit pretty nicely. I'm going to go ahead and color it in just to make it a little more easier to see. The prices continue moving, falls into this other new trading range breaks out and now it's clearly outside it falls into this channel i'm thinking there's an overshoot here it looks like it's pulling back and i do see a failed second entry long here there's a new high here first entry long pulls back makes a second entry long failure now the second entry long failure it did close very very bearish and it looks like it's coming back into this trading range so there's an overshoot and it's coming back down but it gave me hesitation because it is it is below the ema which is nice it looked like it was one leg down, pulls back a second leg down. And then after I made two legs down, I wasn't sure if it's ready to resume going back up because up until this point, prices have been very bullish, indicating a slow grind up. But you did just have an overshoot, so I wasn't sure if this is going to have prices come all the way back down to test the bottom side of this trading range. Now, the trading range, I don't know if it's still valid anymore because I don't know if this... Uh, channel is valid just because it had one touch, two touch, and then for the longest time it never came back. It did touch the midline, so it gave me a little bit of confusion. I wasn't 100% sure what was going on. So when I saw this form, I decided I didn't want to take an entry right here. Turns out it would have worked out pretty nicely. Stopped around, continue going, and it kind of falls into this new shortened up channel, shortened, uh, shortened trend channel going up, then it comes back down. This one's a little bit wider. Breaks out, keeps chopping. We're getting very close to the end of the day now. And it goes into the close. Until right here, where the actual market closes, right around, I guess, 2 o'clock Pacific Standard. So that's how I saw the charts today. There were uh, only two trades that I took. Uh, another trade that I thought was potentially uh, pretty, excuse me, potentially a decent entry. And, uh, see. Yeah. So hopefully that was helpful.